Welcome back everyone to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. For today, we had on the show the super amazing badass Liz. She's incredible. I hope you like this episode. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow. It helps a lot. And again, thank you so much. Have an incredible day. Enjoy the show. And I'll see you in the next one. Perfect. So welcome back everyone to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. For today, we have the incredible, the amazing, the badass Liz. Liz, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing, Dan? I'm doing fantastic. I mean, what better way to continue an epic Thursday than that, that chatting with someone as epic and badass as you? You know what I mean? <laughs> you give me way too much credit. Absolutely. I mean, you deserve it. Come on. You deserve it. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, so yeah, so welcome here. It's incredible to have you here. Now, for those who don't know who is incredible, awesome, badass, Liz, please tell us who you are. Uh, so my name is Liz Bachman, and I am an actor local to Atlanta, Georgia. There you go. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, sum it up right there. I love it. I love it. Short but epic. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> let's let's go back your time here a little bit and tell me where the passion started. Like, what triggered it? Um. So I've always really uh, just well, I've always kind of been like a goofball, honestly, okay. um, and enjoyed like. I, not even being different characters, just very outgoing and getting fr- in front of like friends and family and performing. Um, I still remember I was 14, a freshman in high school, and we were reading Romeo and Juliet in my lit class. And I came home and was in the kitchen in front of my mom trying to act out every part. Of course, holding the script, I didn't memorize it, but just sitting yeah. there um, acting it out. And what's interesting is I didn't, I didn't ever really pursue it. I think I took like one theater class in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew that I enjoyed performing in front of people. Uh, I started playing guitar and piano around like 15 or 16. So I kind of took that route at first. I thought like I would be a musician, which I still enjoy that and have fun with that. But I thought, and I think music and acting and dance and all those the reason like a triple threat exists is because they all coincide nicely with one another Mm. but yeah I didn't uh I didn't do anything with acting until college I got into college and I started um as biology pre-vet so I was obsessed with dolphins and I was like hell-bent determined on becoming a veterinarian and then I just wasn't happy and I would always like see actors and tv shows and then social media really started coming around and you see celebrities more and more and these actors and these performers and you're like seeing their life or seeing them post about their process and starting to kind of get that curtain pulled back a little bit Mm. and I was like that's really cool how do I do that? And I started, I just got this idea in my head and I'm like, I I have to do that. How am I going to do that? And, but that took a while. That was two or three years of me accepting that process of, I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor and wanting to know how to do that, how to dive into that, how to jump over to that, to that step. I I had no idea. I don't, I don't come from a family of performers. Um, I didn't really know any performers. I knew maybe like a couple people from high school that did theater, but I was never really friends with them. And I and I don't didn't even know if they'd gone on to perform it. So it pre- keep performing. So um, yeah. So I there was one guy that I knew from the gym, and I knew he was an actor, and I'd like seen on his Instagram that he had been in a commercial, and I DM'd him and was like how do I how do I do this like what do I do and he's like you got to get in class that was his first like Mm. uh a piece of information I was like where and so he gave me a studio in Buford Georgia um to go to and just start taking classes and it kind of things started opening up from there then I switched to um theater for a year in college like for or for a little over semester um and ultimately I felt like I didn't have the knowledge or skill set to pursue that fully I didn't really know Mm. so and I I love 
performing on stage, but I also knew like film was what I had a passion for more movies, television. So I ended up switching from theater to uh, film and digital media. So I took like the six year college plan, like, but yeah. eventually got that degree. Um, and then, yeah, I just started training and I'm still training, auditioning and through getting that degree, got to be in like some short films and one television show so far, but more to come, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. Wow, that's badass. Let me just say that. Yeah, that was very rambly and long, but that's no, in but a it's nutshell. Incredible. Yeah, how yeah, I yeah. Got to where I am. And you know, it's so it's so cool the fact that that you that at first you wanted to become a vet, but then on the process you were like, you know what? No, this is not this is not what I this is not what I want. Let me just find something else, which is which is amazing, which is really cool because sometimes and I've seen it, you know, like uh with uh with friends of mine that they start to study something that they that they don't like. And then you're like, why you didn't just quit over and find something you like? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, because you know I didn't, uh, mm, I didn't find it, or uh, or I don't know what do I want. And I'm like, yeah, but it's better if you take a break, then find yourself, you know, find what actually makes you happy, and then make that jump. Otherwise, you're gonna be spending money here and there, and on something that you're not gonna like, and it's mm -hmm. gonna be a total waste, you know? Yeah, I I 100% agree with that. I think more people should pursue what they want and I think I think fear and then conventional like routes as we we lean towards these conventional yeah. routes that were like told and like preached to us as a as a kid I remember starting college and I felt like the options were pre-med lawyer business mm -hmm. marketing or teacher it was like these were like these five options and then come to find out there's just so much more you can yeah. do yeah exactly that's 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 actually yeah that's totally true the fact that when you finish when you finish school and then you go to college and then they will tell you that this that that there's only these possibilities and then you're like okay but what about you know and when you touch about either acting either acting or music or everything they will be telling you yeah that's a hobby you know don't pay right. that. yeah and you're like absolutely. Oh, and you're like okay and that is actually one of the things that um that uh, that I started to see, you know, when I, when I, when I wanted to create that, because I was like, wait a minute, I don't see, like, I don't think, like, I don't see Tom Cruise, for example, working on a nine to five job and then waiting for the weekend. So then he can shoot the next mission impossible. You know, it's right. It, there has to be something there. So I was like, then it's true. I mean, it, like you can actually make a living of it, but I do think that, that even to this day, I mean, right now it's more open. Yeah. But even to this day, there's still, this kind of mentality right that you can't make a living of 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 the arts you know you need oh, to you need to find uh a job either in a company or become a lawyer doctor etc cetera, etc cetera, and then you will be able to get like a like a like a living which is a to which is total nonsense total mm -hmm. nonsense so and we well and we live in this like awesome time of when we have all this technology at our fingertips so it it's really if you want to create content you can yeah yeah absolutely which also at the same time it makes people to be like okay i want to do it too but once they realize the work behind the scenes they're like you know what no this is not for me which i so like sometimes i, I discover that for example uh we have like this film right this new upcoming film and then we see this actor that we have never seen and then everybody started to say like oh this guy came out of nowhere that is a that, or, or for example like oh that is a story of success and once you check the name of the person you're like come on he's been like he or she has been acting for almost 10 years i mean it's obvious that that person deserved that so right you know what i mean so it's so fun when that happens oh yeah overnight success i that was probably one of the earlier things i learned in pursuing acting is mm -hmm. a myth um it's just it's not true if you it's it, the thing about the overnight success in my opinion is that's when the world noticed somebody yeah but that isn't when they started working they've been doing it for years absolutely usually. absolutely and also like once like yeah once told me this actress once told me that if you get if you get into yeah if you start to get successful real fast which is amazing but now the problem is going to be maintain yourself on that level and don't mm. come down, you know, because you can do it like little by little and then you start to learn more and more and more. And then once you get to the top, let's say that you will be able to of what you learn from those experiences to maintain yourself on top. But if 
you know, in a in a in a span, yeah, it, in a short span, you went from zero to something really big. Now the problem is going to be to maintain that, which is really hard, and that's why we'll sometimes see this overnight, let's say, and in a couple of months, poof, they're just gone because they were not they they were not able to maintain that that uh that barrier that they went just in a jump, let's say. Right, for sure, completely mm. agree. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy, but tell me, like, once you started with your whole acting career, what were some of the challenges that you that you first saw? So it's funny because I think I. When I started acting, I just kind of thought I was I'm speaking to what we were talking about, really just thought this like overnight success would happen. Yeah. Um, I also did not like when I was recommended to take class, I was like, OK, I'll do that. But do I need it? Like I, kind of that thing now that drives me mm. crazy when someone who doesn't act or knows nothing of the profession will be like, oh, I could do that. That's easy. Acting easy. Oh, I could do that. And I kind of had that mindset. I was like, oh, you're just going to, I'm just going to pretend to go and be somebody. And then getting in class, getting in front of people, learning how to like develop a character, stuff like that. I was like, this is really hard. And I learned that I am a major overthinker. And so I've been training for about five years now and that, and I've gotten you know better and I just I it's it's a craft that like you never master in my opinion it's just you keep they call it well I call it your actor tool toolbox so mm -hmm. you just keep adding new tools new methods new ways of like finding a uh, way into the character um but you never in my opinion you never master it uh but anyway so I but I just thought I was gonna like kind of breeze in and like in a year or so like people will be like oh she's amazing kind of thing and yeah. that is not how that works yeah. um so I would say like my big thing is I was I was overthinking um a lot and then of course nerves I I didn't think I had nerves and it's and it's easy to perform when you don't care um, and all these times when I would jump in front of friends and family and be goofy and silly or do whatever, I didn't care. I was just having fun, which I still have fun as an actor, but I care. I care about, am I being honest to this character? Am I, and, and even saying that sentence right there, am mm -hmm. I being honest to this character? I wasn't thinking that mm -hmm. I was thinking about myself. And then you've learned, and then you learn as you continue performing, oh, it's not about you. It's. It's about the story. It's about your scene partners. It's not about you. It's about you being honest to the character, but it's not so acting is not about you coming in there to be like, hey, look at me. Hey, I'm doing this thing. And I think I had a lot of like misinformation about how I perceived acting and mm. what my role as an actor would be. And the more I dove into it, the more I fell in love with it, no doubt. Mm. But really realizing oh it's actually a selfless thing and kind of getting that in my head and learning how to show up and then and then just the basic stuff learning the industry learning the lingo um starting to form those relationships mm -hmm. of course those are they're not even super challenging it's just consistency yeah be like being prepared doing the work but also finding a balance because like you said it, it takes a long time it's not it's a journey for sure and I think if finding that balance for myself of not being obsessed with acting mm -hmm. to a point that I am not enjoying my life that almost like this desperation of I have to make it whatever making it means as an actor um and finding this balance of acting is something I love. It's, but it's, it's ultimately what I want to do. It's not mm. who I am. Um, so yeah, I think those would be like my earlier challenges and still things that like I'm working through, but have gotten a lot stronger and better at. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I do. I do agree on that, that if you put yourself in a position that you need to, that you need to make it, you're not going to enjoy it at all. It's going to be frustrating a lot of, like, most of the time, because as we've been saying, I mean, it's a process. You need to go step by step. Otherwise, you're not going to enjoy it. And, the, and, mm -hmm. and, and besides enjoying it, you're not going to, you're not going to learn. And 
if you don't learn, then one day you're not going to be able to know what to do if if something happens because you didn't because you were trying to do like some like everything super fast, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, just horrible. And, and and I think that goes with the idea that uh, uh, this whole mentality that about uh, don't sleep, you know, if you if you if you want to do something, go full force, don't don't eat, don't sleep, just work on that 100 percent. And I did try that, I remember, and it's just horrible because mm -hmm. it starts to affect you little by little. You start to feel way tired, like too tired. And if, and, and if you're too tired, you're not going to be able to perform. And if mm. you're not, I mean, everything starts to connect into this huge, um, uh, what's, like, what's the word here, into this huge uh, disappointment, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, and, which I do think that also you need to, at the same time, kind of take care of yourself as well you know you need to enjoy it at the end of the day it's something you love then enjoy every every piece of it so right for sure I think I 100% agree with that mentality of I which I had it at first was I'm going to devote everything to yeah. this yeah and then you realize it's just not sustainable it's not going to yeah. last because you're not say it takes 10 years to again I don't love the idea the word phrase making it because I that, that can be different to, Absolutely. Absolutely. for every single person as to what that means but I guess for me making it would be to be able to su financially support myself solely on acting that would be kind of my definition of making it there's of course dream roles and stuff like that and there's all there's bars beyond Absolutely. that but, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I'm finding like a little, I, I've become a big believer of little steps daily. I mean, mm. consistent consistency really is what's going to get you to where you want to go. It's never going to be these, you know, it's just dieting. If you are eating next to nothing and starving yourself and, and you're like, I'm going to do this for three weeks and yeah, you might drop 10 pounds in that three weeks, but that's why you're going to gain it back because it's just not realistic. And it's the same thing with acting. Like I can't, you know this mentality of eat sleep and breathe acting like no I'm a, I'm a human I need I need relationships with my friends and my peers and I need to rest and I need to do other find other things that I enjoy Absolutely. um and I think that was really important for me to find yeah. that yeah balance find that balance yeah exactly because yeah it's crazy whenever they get like this idea of, of go go you know you you're gonna sleep when you die so use that time to I mean, I get it that the whole idea here is to motivate people. I get it. But at the same time, it's super dangerous when you actually try it because it doesn't take you anywhere. It just keeps, you just feel frustrated because you will be spending nights of not, of not getting sleep. And you'd be like, okay, so because I didn't sleep, I used that time to it, but you still, but you didn't kind of, I mean, as we've been saying, I mean, it's a process. You're not going to be able to, you know, once to, like someone, like so someone once told me that if you want to become viral, sure, it's super easy, not a problem. You can make a TikTok and problem solved. You're already viral, fantastic. Right. But if you actually wanna to, wanna to have a career on it and you actually have want to build something, then yeah, it takes it takes like a lot of time, which I do understand now why we have like this this huge generation now who gets frustrated because they're not viral or or they 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 haven't make it. Because mm. they have like this idea that in order to make it, you need to have this huge, I don't know, 30 room mansion and a private jet and multiple properties around the country and all of that. And right. no, I mean, you know, there's like, there's so many definitions. I think everyone has like their own definition of success. And as you said, if you can make a living of something that you love, I mean, at least to me as well would be I'm successful. I mean, I do, I do what I love. I do. I can't live right. with that. And I sustain myself with that. What else do I need, you know? For sure. Yeah, completely agree with you. I love it. Now, let's say that one day you get, I don't know, this role in the next Avengers movie, right? So mm -hmm. my so my question is how you prepare a character. Now, I understand, of course, that depends on the role. But what is your initial approach um, before, uh, yeah, like how you start diving into this character creation process? Um. Okay, so if I got a role in the next Avenger movie, the first thing I do would probably like shit my pants. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. okay. Um yeah. I would be ecstatic. And um, but no, 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 just joke, just messing around with you. But the the way I prep for a script is the 
or a role, sorry, thinking about the script. The first thing I do, um, and I got this from uh, one of my acting mentors and it really has helped me, is read it, uh, the script three times through mm. and try to read it objectively, not whatever my character is in the script, not putting myself into her mindset yet, just trying to objectively take the information because like I said, it's not just about me and I need to understand the story. I need to understand other characters in the story beside my own. And then I also want to be objective about my character at first. Um, so that's like my first kind of thing that I do. And and it's hard because I I do sometimes when I'm reading it, I'm, I'll read it the first time through. And that one, I'm always pretty good about being objective. But the second and third time, I start kind of saying it out loud and I'm like oh I want to do this with her and I start thinking about my character because there's a lot more into like developing your character mm. the next thing is um after I do that is I want to know how I can connect so fi find my way in um that is oh I'm trying to think so say you're playing a villain so a, a, like um just really heinous character I mean you can think about just even just just horrible people like I mean unfortunately humans can just do pretty nasty things in this yeah. world and and we portray those on on screen because we try to show life as as it actually is as it exists in our reality um but you can't hate your character and mm. and that and I even have to be careful about like like I played a um a woman who in a short film and she she murdered her wife and so oh, okay. yeah and I and you can't but if, so for me it's like I can't judge her mm -hmm. and I can't be like oh what a psychopath because I have to play her and it's like when we're, I'm playing a character I'm taking myself and I'm like I'm melding or I'm becoming mm -hmm. that person um and it's like if if I hate her or if I'm like oh she's crazy she's insane and it's like I, I'm not gonna fit like I'm not gonna be able to step into those shoes. Absolutely. Uh, it's gonna be like these two opposing forces, and I think that comes across on screen. I I really think when people are like oh like they're they're a bad actor or like that acting was so bad in that movie or whatever. Sometimes it can be scripts because like we can only do what we can do with the words that we are given and the story we are given. Um, I mean, but sometimes it's just the actor and the character are like literally in complete opposition. They're, hmm. they're not together as one. Um, and you want to become one with, and, and this is all my opinion and what works for me because every actor is different and how they Absolutely. like, how their process works, um, is different. And, and it's kind of in a weird way, a sacred thing. Like mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. and I've, and I've learned to like, just respect other actors processes and respect my own and be like, Hey, what works for them works for them. And what works for me works for me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what can I connect to? So with the the um girl who murdered her wife, uh her character, she was abused as a child mm. and she um her father had killed her mother. Okay. So you start to be like, okay, and just start to have that compassion. And it's not that I am saying what is okay she does is okay or whatever, mm. but it's finding a way to connect and be like, okay. If me as Liz Bachman witness murder as a child, was abused as a child, how does that start shaping me? How mm. does that start affecting me in this world if these are my circumstances? Because it's easy for me, like I was fortunate, I had great parents, me as Liz Bachman, I had great parents, I had a really good home life. So it's easy for me to pass judgment really quickly. Yeah. But recognizing characters aren't, are, people within the world of the film and if I was in their circumstance if I grew up that way in abusive mm. situations stuff like that how is that going to start shaping me in the world um and so yeah trying to find a way in that I I can connect to um the character and then I also really like um journaling from the character's point of view um just it really helps to me to journal in that mindset and start and it, it helps me to get out of m my brain and thought process as myself and mm -hmm. start thinking through the lens of my character 
because I want everything to be coming across truthfully as my character. So it just really helps me kind of be like, okay, like go, like go away. Like, I'm not going to think through the lens of Liz Bachman right now. I'm going to think through the lens of her name was Julian, Julian in, in right now. And just being able to sit quietly and have those thoughts and think through it and not judge them. I think not judging, judging yourself as an actor, judging your process as an actor or anything like that is just going to harm you. But uh, with that, I will say, because I, I, it really bugs me. Um, I think leading with kindness and stuff is very important in life. And I had an acting teacher tell me, your process is yours. So that means it's, it's you, it affects you. But the moment your process starts affecting other people, especially negatively, so sometimes i mean we've heard like the horror stories of actors or whatever were oh yeah oh yeah cussing people out or being de- or i'm in character fuck you like whatever sorry i don't know if i can cuss on here yeah you can it's okay 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 um you know whatever whatever they're doing like that's just disrespectful and stuff like that like that's no longer your process mm. and and that's been really like good I mean not that I would want to do that anyway but it's been really good to be like okay like if you're if an actor needs to be rude to me their scene partner out of the context of their character but like you know it's just it's this weird balance I guess but I don't know I I think like your process is yours it's a sacred thing to you but don't don't go around being addicted to people I guess is what I'm saying yeah and yeah, then yeah, blame yeah. it on your process absolutely yeah i mean at the end don't be a dick yeah yeah there you go yeah um i think i answered your question i got off on a tangent no no no. yeah absolutely you answered it perfectly and and it's it's fascinating that like all those type of different stories you were able to play but also i would i mean i would assume that sometimes i mean that it does take you to a vulnerable place especially if you're playing Mm -hmm. uh, uh i mean i wouldn't say like difficult but like a hard character right with a deep backstory Mm -hmm. and uh yeah yeah i mean i i could understand i could understand how challenging might i mean challenging but at the same time fascinating to try to put yourself in the mind that basically that character is going to use your body your voice your yeah like your whole thing to play to tell the story you know right yeah for sure they become characters become a part of you and it's a it's a very weird thing there's like um I, I it it's I call it like an actor's high and you don't get it every take um or so but this moment where you are breathing and living 100% like fully through whatever whoever the character is and like you are just so present and it's like it's this weird I call I call it an actor's high you're like and then they're like cut or whatever and I'm just like shit like what was that how do I do that again that was amazing and it doesn't happen every time so it's like sometimes you hit it like 90 percent and and you try to like save that for your close-ups or whatever but like sometimes you it's just like all cylinders are firing you are so synced up with your scene partner like everything is just coming together and that when I I've experienced it And then I would say that is the thing that just makes me like, okay, I want to come back for more. I want to do this longer. This makes everything worth it. So I'm kind of chasing that, I guess, in a weird way. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you could have any role right now, like right now, which one you would choose? I don't have like a specific project in mind, but I really it's funny that you introduced this whole thing with like, oh, the badass Liz or whatever, because yeah. I would love to play um, like some type of like just badass, like assassin type character. Um, I think like the training for that would be really fun. I think the process of like becoming that character would be really fun. Um, I don't know. I, some, I, I love doing comedy stuff too, yeah. but lately there's been this weird like drive I'm like oh I want to do some type of like 
action thriller mm, something mm, mm. with like this like care like female like the weapons the like all of it just like yeah. the tricks like but like a just a badass and i i think too like I love playing characters that are like opposite of me, like like just crazy opposite of me, mm. um, because I don't consider myself edgy or like that at all. Like, and so this idea of like this all black, like tough, like I consider myself tough. I will say that that's within me, but but like this edgy, just killer, like killer instincts. I'm like that'd be so fucking fun. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, plus you're badass too, so. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, <clears throat> okay, I'll take that. Now, what has been some of the worst additions you ever had? <laughs> uh, probably just, like, I'll give you an, an actual example in a second, but the first year, like, I, because I still have, like, my auditions, like, I keep them. Yeah. And I've looked back at them because a lot of auditions are self-taped. Um, mm. And so hooey, that first year is just, it's uncomfortable to watch because the whole, just the idea of even becoming a character, living truthfully under like in a character's world, all that. It's like stuff that was being said to me. It was not stuff that I was experiencing. Mm, okay. I was very... Um, trying to give casting directors what they wanted mm. or what I thought they wanted and I and I still catch myself falling into that and I have to be like play it just like as you would like it's not even about them because I think like obviously I'm blonde hair blue eyes right and there's thousands if not millions of actors who have blonde hair blue eyes out there mm. you know very and I'm white just very basic generic like but it's like but I'm me and really coming to terms with people can look like me we can have similar build structure we can go out for the same roles but we are going to play it differently because totally. I we are individual people and you're auditioning it as you so be you and it's a it's this idea of like you really are special like not like the mom and dad told like you know what I mean not the mom yeah, and yeah. Dad special. yeah I get it I get it, like I get it your I get ego it. is like way too <laughs> yeah. big but you each person on the pla face of the planet is unique to them and just like your fingerprint or your voice like it's unique to you yeah. no nobody else has it not, not even twins so I think like I learning that because I was not doing that in the beginning I was like oh um okay blonde college girl okay how would they how would they I'm going to a prep party how would they want me to do that how would they want me to show up for that mm -hmm. how you know because I I I'm not super like girly or feminine and so I'd be like oh they probably want like a girl going to a frat party I probably need to play that super like girly and feminine and it's like why that's not how I, I I've gone to frat parties that's not how I've gone to a frat party I haven't yeah. like been super girly and feminine and that might be what somebody else does but that's not going to be what I do so tr like that trying to figure out like e it's not about you impressing the casting directors it's about you showing up and just being you and you in that um audition mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um probably I had nerves because we I just didn't do a lot of in-person auditions and I still haven't and so my first in-person audition I did I was like prepped I was I had my script memorized I like did all this prep work with the script and I got there and the casting director pulls me in and they turn the camera on and they're like okay this is gonna be your reader and I'm like cool cool and I get like up on my mark and they're like slate and I slate and I freaking hate slating and then uh and then we they start speaking and mm. I'm like do I remember nothing and I'm like uh and they're like do you want to like you know have the script I was like no I haven't memorized but just nothing there was nothing there and I just the nerves completely took over and I was completely like just so intimidated and then I think I ended up they gave me like a script 
and I just like fumbled through it and <laughs> needless to say did not get the part no. um but yeah that was probably the, like the the worst and like the most like awkward and, and embarrassing one that I had yeah but you know on your defense you were just re you was just recently started you know yeah yeah for sure I mm -hmm. but um other than it's hard like I haven't had any like crazy auditions because most of my auditions are self-tapes so like if I flub up or if, you know and and I I read a lot um with um Mallory Ivy she's a lot of times like my reader so we live relatively close to each other and we, we cool. go back and forth reading for each other but um yeah so it's like if I flub up or if I mess up and you know it's just you know I think the biggest thing is getting out of my head for auditions and um ah, what was the actor I recently saw an interview I'm not gonna remember his name uh the uh Spider-Man um which one? Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield. Tom Tom Holland, the first one, the villain. Uh, uh the first villain. The, the, the oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he he was Batman. Um. Yes, yes, he was. Uh, Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yes, yes. Okay. He. Thank you. I was like, yes. We. I was like, he talks to actors all the time. We got to be able to figure out this out. I saw a uh, um like a little clip like interview with him talking about how he um he started when auditions changed for him he started acting like he just had already got the part and I was like that's genius uh, you know why has nobody told me this before but just like prepping an audition like you're going into work that day versus yeah. prepping it takes the pressure off oh I already booked this cool let me let me prep this like I would prep it if I was just going in to do my job and so like that kind of has that's been helpful especially like I, I saw that few months ago and it's been helpful in changing how I audition I would say end of 2022 and then the couple I've gotten so far this year so I love it that's pretty yeah. cool yeah amazing amazing now before moving on huge shout out to Mallory she's amazing I mean if you're watching this or if you are listening to it you're incredible Mallory we'll know that um but yeah moving on oh um, yeah no no I love Mallory Ivy guys she's that girl's doing big things I tell you yeah yeah she is you know she she rocks yeah. Um, now, I forgot the question. No, 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 I got it. Yeah, I got it back. Um, now, if you, let's say that one day I call you and I tell you that I want to become an actor. Now, mm -hmm. I don't have, a, I have basically zero experience. So based on what you know, what advice could you give to me in order to start this career? Um, the best advice I could give anyone wanting to do this is get in a class an acting class. Yes. Um, the, I, I, I still, I'm starting another class in next Wednesday, another acting class. Like I've been taking classes for about five years now. And one, it's just even, it's a way for me to work out actors. We do, like, we, we like acting. So get in a environment where you can act. Don't wait on, um, a part to come along because that could be forever honestly yeah. and the only and you don't want just acting to be auditions that is going to suck you dry like auditions are not fun I just maybe some there's an actor out there that enjoys them um I'm grateful to get auditions I understand it's part of the process but it's essentially a job interview so oh, yeah. I would say get in a class um don't, I, I would also say, pe I've heard people before be like, oh, I want to do that. I could never do that. And, and they're like, oh, I'm an introvert. There are so many introverts. I'm definitely an extrovert, but there are so many introverts who make phenomenal actors. Like they just, so I can promise you all the famous actors you see on TV and movies, they're not all extroverts. There are introverts in that mm -hmm. mix. So mm -hmm. if you really want to try this and see what it's all about and you're like, oh, I'm introverted. I don't like getting up in front of people, blah, blah, blah. There are people, I have friends who are introverts and they do it and they love it. So if you even have like a, I mean, taking one class it will give you so much insight into this world. On the flip side of that, if you want to be famous, don't become an actor. Like, 
if go become an influencer, go do stuff on TikTok. If your only like interest is like having views, being seen, having people follow you, I can, this is not for you. It's just, there is so much work involved with acting. And I'm not saying there's not work involved with influencers or whatever, but oh. I, I know like people, like they take that very seriously, but it's, it's not about the fame. I'm not going to say like, we don't like it because <laughs> I, I'm stealing this from Dak Shepard. I listened to his yeah. podcast, his armchair expert podcast. And it's like, he said one time in there, he was like, we're actors we all have like an ego inside of us like we want to be seen to an extent and it's like yeah, yeah. I'm not going to deny that like I don't want to be seen and I don't want to be on tv or in movies absolutely but that's not my driving force with this and if that is your driving force just like don't don't try it um and then the other thing is just understand like it's it's a process like you are gonna learn you're gonna make mistakes like like we talked about it's a process earlier but like I think the biggest advice I can give is like, just get in a class. If you know an actor, reach out and then just start playing and having fun with it and seeing if you enjoy it, if you like it. And then the other stuff will unfold. I think people get so wrapped up in how do I audition? How do I get an agent? How do I do this? How do I do that? And it's like, well, do you even know if you want to act? So you have this idea that you want to, but but actually go and do that and see if you like that. And if you like that, then all that business part, that'll come like the, the agents, the auditions, all that kind of stuff. And that's when it goes from, Hey, this is this thing that's fun that I enjoy to, Oh, this is a job that I'm going to pursue, which it's still fun. And I still enjoy it, but don't start with like the work start with, Hey, do I like this? Is this fun? Do I want to do this? Is it worth the work? Mm. You know? that's I don't know that's that's probably my advice to someone interested in um acting there you go if I ever become if I ever become an actor and I get an award I'll be mentioning you in my thank you speech <laughs> awesome Countdown. hey you can do it I really think anyone could become an actor yeah. um yeah it would be fun I mean like one of my goals at some point is so I have like this bucket list right and on this bucket list one of the things well one of the things is one to be on a set Mm -hmm. and the second one is to be on a film either as an extra or whatever but that once the film is is done and i watch it and i just pass by and be like yeah that's me i, I want that that's it what uh what city do you live in where are you at so i live in mexico oh dang okay i yeah. thought you were gonna be i was like in, Al in atlanta i could get you on a movie set like that like there's so oh, many I'm I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna, I'm definitely, like, one of my plans is at some point, so check this out. What I want to do is I want to uh, print the poster with all of the people that I've interviewed, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. like having, but my, my goal here is to get each and every one of them to sign it, to sign it, you know, to have, to have, like, the signature there. So oh, I'll be so cool. Yeah. So I definitely yeah. be coming to the plan at some point. Kind of like That's it. awesome. That's awesome. Because I do want to be in it. I mean, I will. I will. I mean, I'm. I. I will be a ghost. Nobody will know that I'm. That I'm. That I'm even there. But I just want to be in the set and see like all the things behind of it. Because I mean, I do love to watch like behind the scenes of a film, and it's so fun. You know, whatever. And like especially when they are when they are either playing a very dramatic scene or some action scene, and like the whole vibe behind it. It's yeah. Cool. So. Yeah, it's really cool to see like how they do stuff. It's fun to be, um, like extras where you have to do um like costume fittings and stuff like that so you can actually like because I I've actually done a few things when I was starting out and one of them was just like show up with your own clothes kind of stuff but one of them like we got to like go do a costume fitting and got to like put wardrobe on and stuff like that so yeah. it was in uh I you don't see I was it hunger games I can't remember which one it was you do not you do not see me in it I remember I was just in a big crowd and mm -hmm. I I was like, oh, this is the scene I'm in. Nope, not there. Don't don't know where I am. The, but... uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you know, like uh, years ago, uh, they did. They were looking for zombies for The Walking Dead, and and they and they did a casting here, and I went there, and it was so hilarious. I remember because so they were so they put us in this. Uh, yeah, so they put all of us in this kind of hall, you know, in this yeah. kind of uh, uh scenario, and be like, okay, be a zombie. And you will see all different people just be like zombies, and then it will be like, okay, I want him, him, her, him. And of course, that I didn't, that I, I, I didn't got, uh, I wasn't a good enough zombie. I was like, dang it. 
but yeah. uh but even though like that experience that was that was that was super fun because yeah. at the same time i mean you get the chance to meet also more people there and i think those right. experiences are okay so yeah so something like that i would love i mean even if as an extra i get killed i'm fine with it but right that if i can just appear for a couple of seconds and be like oh that's me that's perfect and i just want that <laughs> nice i don't care um but yeah yeah now uh moving on here let's say one day netflix hbo max disney plus you name it they call you and they tell you that they have this idea which goes that all of the characters you have played they're gonna gather to celebrate your birthday but the film needs a name so how would you call it <laughs> um oh goodness probably like who's at the door or i like it okay. who's knocking or something like that um because I think about the characters I've played and they're all kind of different. Um, now that I'm kind of thinking through like what I've actually played, I'm like, huh, you've kind of played a, a interesting like Posh Posh. Because I've done a lot of like short films and um, yeah. and like I did a web series and yeah, so it's just kind of these like Posh Posh, like indie projects, these characters, but all fun all been great experiences but just you know just learning and uh yeah i think it'd be like who's knocking or yeah who's at the door or something mm. like that like and or what, who's coming to dinner maybe okay and what jo- what genre would it be would it be like action comedy dark comedy horror perhaps what would it be i think it'd be like a dark comedy because hmm. i have the like two larger roles i had they're kind of like darker Okay. But then I like have like this lighthearted type A college girl that I played and like she I feel like she would just make it comedic and then I feel like if I was in this playing myself at at the bir- at my birthday I would be trying to like I would make it comedic trying to like keep everybody happy. You know. Hmm. Okay, I like it. Yeah. I, like I think it. it'd be a, little, a dark comedy because like Julian would be there, the girl who murdered her wife. And then uh, another character named Jolyn Stone would be there, who's ex-military and has, like, really bad PTSD. So okay. we'd have the two of them, like, doing God knows what. And then, you know, some, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, it'd, I think it'd be a dark comedy. Some I think, okay. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Now, so definitely we'll have to be on HBO or Netflix, right? No Disney. Yeah, yeah, no Disney. No, we gotta yeah. we gotta be able to we gotta be able to cuss and maybe maybe show some like I don't think there'd be anything graphic I don't know maybe at the end Jillian ki- kills everyone. Yeah, sounds okay. <laughs> it was well the the short film I played her in was supposed to be like a serial killer origin story so like maybe that's her next strike. It's coming coming to my birthday and then at the end of the party just like kills everyone walks okay out. so the other one was a prequel to it okay I yeah it. yeah there okay, we go so, so perfect thinking so strategizing you yeah, know? yeah yeah we are building already here a whole cinematic universe i love it <laughs> i love it i love it now if you could describe your whole career but on a drink how would you call it and what would it have oh gosh okay i saw this on instagram earlier actually it's called a pop rocks rita okay it's like a margarita i love tequila so it's got tequila in it uh it's like a margarita but they do like a sweet and sour mix Mm. and then they put like pop rocks candy in it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i think like it's like oh it's kind of sweet kind of sour and then you got like this pop of candy and like maybe that's like when i book like you know what i mean like because you you don't get the candy all the time you don't get those bookings all the time totally totally. you know so and sometimes it's sweet like and then sometimes it's a little sour i i have my down moments with acting trust me it's a it's a relationship for sure yeah plus if you go if you go too far you're gonna regret it yeah 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 okay i like it i like it yeah i think i crushed it yeah i'll take it i'll take that yeah absolutely yeah i mean it's it's a very good good like analogy here. Fantastic. Um, now my last question here is what motivates you? You know, we all have those days that we just want to quit. And it's it's funny because sometimes nothing bad is happening, you know, everything it's okay, but we suddenly get like so we suddenly woke up with this mm-hmm. idea that we are that we are wasting our time. We start to compare, you know, with others here. 
And once you realize it's been already like a couple of hours and you're just wasting your time over and over. So how you manage to silence those those voices and continue on this road that you have built for some yeah for so many years now? Um I think people really motivate me. Um okay. I I think people are just kind of insanely awesome. Uh I'm not gonna say every person on the planet is. <laughs> But, yeah, but like what people do and like things people overcome are it's just insanely impressive if you I think there's a an actually like an account that's like on Instagram called like people are awesome or something mm -hmm. and it's just videos of people doing awesome crap like you're just and and then not only that but just like simple stuff like the the single mom who like I just thought of Reba, the single mom who works who much <laughs> more. No, uh, but like single moms who like take care of their kids and like just life is just hard and it's messy, but it's like it's beautiful all in the same sense. Mm. And I just I think so. I think people are a big motivator for me as far as like oh, people overcome amazing things and people pursue their passions and people like do achieve their dreams and that's a that is possible um I think another one that is actually kind of like something I'm working on for 2023 uh is and I just I was listening to a podcast earlier and it's like self it, discipline is what I what it is but like mm. um it, the they he said something on the podcast he said self-discipline is a way of showing self-love and I'm like that's true and you you don't always feel like it yeah. and finding this balance of doing things when I don't want to do them because I absolutely have days where I don't want to do them I mm. don't want to I have auditions that come in and I'm like ugh, I don't want to do this and it's like and it's not because I don't want to audition. It's because I worked all day. I, or I had a bad day. It's not, I'm human being. It's not because I'm like, oh shit. Like I don't want to audition. Like that's a different, that would be a different conversation. That'd be like, maybe you shouldn't be pursuing this anymore. But I have days where I'm like, I'm tired and they want a quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. um, they want it. Like I get, like I had an audition like a month ago and they sent it to me at 5 p.m. at night. And they wanted it by 8 a.m. the next morning. And so I'm like, okay. So I, I had plans that night, but nothing major. It was just like I was going to go into the gym and go hang out with a friend. So stuff that I could cancel, but it's like, that's an inconvenience of like, oh, I, yeah, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to cancel my plans to rush home, do my hair and makeup to do an audition and then take my hair and makeup like off. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so I think doing things, even when I don't want to do them, is like a weird, like, I don't know if that's like motivation, but it's something I've definitely learned. And I'm learning, I'm in my late 20s now, and I'm learning that more and more that like, yeah, sometimes I don't want to do it. And, but recognizing that doing the things I don't want to do are going to lead me to the things that I want. Um, and then just, I hate I hate and I love this it's like how bad do you want it do you mm -hmm. really do you really want this and I think checking in with myself um because if I do really want it then I gotta do the stuff on the days that uh that that I don't want to do it mm -hmm. um which also be reminds me be, be careful with comparison I'm bad about that one and also Sometimes, I don't know if you ever find yourself doing this, but comparing yourself to people who aren't doing um, like what you want to do. Like, for example, um, I need to get all this work done. Yeah. <clears throat> My friend is going to spend the whole day binge watching a show. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I, I, you know, they get to do it. Why don't I do it? Well, maybe they did all their work on Monday. Or maybe did they did all their work on Tuesday. So be careful comparing yourself to people or like what they're doing 
and assume you don't know what result they're going for or where they are in their process I think it's like the same thing of like sometimes like if I'm trying to lose weight and I see someone out who's like eating like junky food or whatever and I'm like oh yeah I, I want pizza like I really want to eat pizza yeah. I'm like oh I can't I'm like oh it's not fair they look like that and they're eating pizza it's like maybe they haven't had pizza in a month like I don't know so I think like that really working on comparison finding my balance finding um yeah I don't know I don't know if that answered your question I don't even know if that was like what motivates me um I guess like let me try and sum that up people are definitely a big motivator for me there you go and I think just like passion like it, that motivates me my passion my love of what I'm doing for sure and I would really hope more people are like getting to pursue their passions I love it I mean, I'll be dropping this mic over here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can I, yeah, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, we're humans, and you know, and I do think that we need every now and then moments so we can either relax, disconnect, you know, kind of be on our own, you know, which I, which I totally support that idea too, mm. that, that it doesn't make sense if you want to push yourself into a moment that you're going to start hating what you do, because, mm then what i would say is why would you hate something that you love you know what I mean? right or like for example whenever i used to have i used to have a lot of this thoughts about about quitting a lot of but yeah like a lot of them but then later on i start to think about like why would i want to stop doing something that i love right doesn't make any sense you know what i mean right then what i what probably the reason might be is because i'm tired mm. which is totally reasonable so perhaps i, sh I should take a couple of days off and then yep regroup and then come back again and redo it again and uh which yeah uh it's it's part of the things that you are that you will start to discover later on you know so i yeah. do get i do get what you think and also the fact with the people too i do think that as you mentioned i mean not everyone is good <laughs> but uh for sure absolutely but but yeah like sometimes you will see things in which in which you discover that Oh, that's pretty cool you know if they can do it i can do it too or yeah or or like stories like that you know so i do mm -hmm. yeah so i do understand what you said you preach so that's why i dropped the mic because you basically yeah yeah recognizing like oh, I, i'm contradicting myself because earlier i was like oh everybody's like you're special like and you are <laughs> but like someone someone isn't more special than you I guess yeah. like we are all special and unique and uh, whether that sounds corny or cheesy but it doesn't you're not better or worse than someone else and so yeah they're they're doing it but that doesn't mean there's not room for you in that space and that doesn't mean that you can't do it too and what they're doing is going to look different than what you're doing even if you're doing the exact same thing there you go absolutely yeah everyone like there's space for everyone you know for sure and i do understand that you know when you're little and they tell you that and once you discover life you're like that's not what my parents told me but you know then you will start to become older and you're like okay i get it you know they said to me because in order to boost my morale so that's perfect life mm -hmm. is not like that i can understand but yeah i do i do think that that there's place for everyone and there's place if you want to become either an actor musician etc there's always going to be a place for you you know there's right. like uh like don't take it don't don't brush it you know enjoy it you know as okay. uh as some people might as some people would say that it's basically a marathon not a sprint so right for sure there you go i mean at the end what can i say liz you're incredible you're awesome you're amazing you're badass i mean it's i love what you do but the most important here is that you're doing it because you love it and you're honest about it and mm -hmm. You know, as easy as it may sound about do what makes you happy, we all know that sometimes it takes years or even your whole life to finally discover what you want to do. The fact that you have that you found it, it's amazing. And um, yeah, I'm super sure that our next conversation is going to be about the multiple thousands upon thousands of roles that you have, have, <laughs> have, have already achieved. And who knows, maybe your own action figure at some point. That would be cool. Oh, that'd be cool. I'd be down to have an action figure. Maybe I'll just make an action figure without even being like in an action movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could do that. You know, an actor once did that to me. 
he was like i actually have one he showed it to me i was like you gotta be kidding me so that was pretty I, that was like that's awesome like, he was like yeah it's cool right i was like yeah that's so cool <laughs> but yeah awesome well i had a great time chatting with you dan same here same here i also want to thank those who watch this video thank you so so much if you are either listening on spotify or apple podcast uh thank you so much yeah well this episode is almost over so what i'm gonna do now on the description below you're gonna see the link to her to the to the, her social media for Liz. let's make her viral hashtag team Liz because she's incredible she's awesome she's badass and Liz, i guess again thank you so much for making this happen keep inspiring keep creating because i'm super sure there's people out there who sees you as a role model or they see you as someone who can get things done so keep inspiring and i'll see you in the next one